Hello. Here we are. This is not a full episode of KSP Rescaled. This is kind of like a little in-between thing I put together doing my uh, rare post-commentary, recorded the video, edited it, and now just talk over it. Uh, you can see what's happening. I'm, I'm uh, rebuilding a lot of stuff in this save file to in order to get my KSP Rescaled uh, uh, series back where it was. What I really want to do, I'm putting this video together, I want to talk about Interstellar, the movie. I went and saw it yesterday. It is great. It is fantastic. It is a wonderful movie-going experience for anybody, most especially for anybody who likes anything having to do with outer space and space travel. You need to go see it. It is the spiritual successor. It is, it is a wonderful homage to 2001 Space Odyssey, finally after what coming up 40 somethings coming up real close to 50 years later we have a movie that is the equivalent of Kubrick's 2001 even though the plot line shares a few similarities but it is different I'm speaking about it I am not going to spoil it I'd appreciate anybody in the comments to this video don't do any spoilers for like let's let's call it like two weeks uh, just just so we give people a chance to go see Interstellar uh, try to try to go see it. It's it has really beautiful uh, de uh, visual depictions of space travel. Those of us who, through KSP or whatever other means, know a little bit about space travel, uh, you could quibble. You could pick apart some technical inaccuracies, things that don't quite make sense. I mean, I look at these space planes that are can do single stage to orbit, even though they they don't appear to be large enough to carry any kind of fuel. I don't know what is that like an antimatter engine using molten lead as a reactant. I hell, I don't know. Ig ignore that. Okay, and and get in. It's still a fantastic looking depiction of space travel. I'll call it semi quasi realistic. And in watching this, some of the exciting action scenes, is specifically if you're a Kerbal Space Program player, um, I'll I'll just this is the closest I'll get to a spoiler, guys. The docking scene. You're going to be hearing a lot about the docking scene. I anticipate very, very soon, a matter of fact, as I record this, I'm, cer I'm certain somewhere on YouTube, there's already Kerbal Space Program videos of people uh, putting up, replicating the docking scene. You go to see this movie, if, if you look around, most of the audience around you, they'll be watching the docking scene. And, and they'll be they'll be all excited and tense. They think, oh, wow, that looks spectacular and dangerous. You, a Kerbal Space Program veteran, be watching that scene and thinking, I've done that! I know how to do it! And it's spectacular and dangerous. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It is a very good movie. I'm enjoying it. And, you know, unlike 2001 A Space Odyssey, the ending makes sense without having to, to buy the novel and read it in order to figure out what the hell just happened. Um, I, there, I, there, it isn't perfect. I do have you know, some quibbles with it. But there are some major plot holes that, you know, once you get home and you start thinking about what happened, you realize that there's there's some plot stupidity. But I, that's pretty much the case for any movie. I've never seen any movie that didn't have at least one, you know, pretty big plot hole. Why didn't they just do X? Well, because that wouldn't make a good story, now would it? <laughs> So yeah, I like Interstellar, e even if Matthew McConaughey's uh, his accent just really bothered the hell of me. Hey, check out this bug in the video that's going. Immediately before uh, that, that alarm went off, my I had a circular orbit, 150 kilometers. Immediately after that alarm went off, it went to apoapsis of 160 and periapsis of 140. Never seen that bug before and have not run into it since. Uh, and only, and actually, I didn't figure out until like several minutes later. I was like, "Hey, w wait a minute! I had a circular orbit. I know I did." Uh, so, so here we are. Yeah, I'm putting together. Um, see, these these are the uh, pieces analogous to what I had uh, with the uh, 
the, the few pieces from the adventure station, which I kept previously. We're putting them up here. Um, yeah, and assemble that. We've, we have got new rockets. I mean, I've redesigned the whole Atlatl Dart series. I'm starting to take a look at really just a rough sketch of, of, of what's the what's going to come after Atlatl Dart as far as you know, the unmanned rockets. I'm going to the Woomera, Woomera Spear series. Uh, docking these things together. This will be fun. <laughs> think about Interstellar. Just think about the docking scene. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You, you just look. Just look at how many videos are, are going to show up with that thing. Uh, no, per, one thing that did irritate me about the movie, as good as a whole lot of the of the space flight looks, they go and they actually the actual space ships themselves look ugly. The space plane itself irritates me they gave and no matter how realistic and sensible and efficient like this boring wedge shape would be I mean I mean really their space plane looked like is 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 pretty damn near two-dimensional why didn't they hire me I could design a pretty cool looking space plane but here's something weird happens whenever I'm docking this thing I've, uh, I use the tweakable everything and I've always griped about the, how strong the the attraction is in these docking ports. I turned the the attraction force way down as an experiment to see if it would work. Almost there. There's the attraction. Boing. <laughs> it bounced. It, it bounced like one and a half times before docking. Okay, so yeah, the takeaway, two things. The, this series is coming back, the KSB rescaled, and Interstellar is good, and you can go see it. It's okay to feel a little bit superior because you know what's going on and other people won't. It's okay.